Got a JVC TDR272 in. This one has a complaint that it does not play in the reverse direction. So we're going to have to uh, take this one apart and see why it's not working. This is a basic WB auto reverse single deck, so it may not be worth fixing, but it's worth taking a shot at it. What do you think? Let's take a look. So I got a tape loaded. So here's the mechanism and we can actually remove the mechanism on this one by just undoing a couple of clips or a couple of plugs and uh, take out a couple of screws. So unplug the head, unplug the control line and there's four screws that hold the mechanism in. These shots are usually fairly simple to work on. Smaller screwdriver might make it a bit easier. Three motor mechanism, so it's a it's got a cam motor to control loading and unloading of the of the, the heads, and uh, a real drive motor for spooling the tape and then a capstan motor to run the two capstans okay I take off this belt here belts actually don't to be look to be in too bad a shape on this one so here's the mechanism and one common problem that happens on these is these switches get dirty and then the deck won't go it's like the Panasonic ones right the decks won't go into uh, into, they won't detect a cassette. Um, there's th these two outside ones detect whether there's the uh, record tab is broken. This switch here detects whether it's a metal tape or sorry, a chrome tape. I believe this one here is for metal, and uh, this other one here is if there's a tape at all. In. If we look up where the holes. For the different tapes are you'll see that the metal tape is oh actually this one here is detecting the metal tape this one here is detecting if there's a tape in the transport so if that switch goes open it will not play it won't do anything uh this capstan doesn't look to be or this pinch roller doesn't look to be in the right position it looks to be a little low when i operate the mechanism i guess i have to turn it by hand uh, I'm going to turn the gear here by hand to do that on this one. But this looks to be low, this, this pinch roller. Like it should be higher than this, you see? So I wonder if it's broken or whether it's just come apart and come out of position. Uh, let's just take the pinch roller out and take a look at it. Pinch roller is released by just pulling a little plastic clip. And it normally would sit in this groove here. Curious as to whether the pinch roller normally sits in this metal groove and is raised or lowered by the when the when the head goes up and down and it's the spring is pulled into position but the the uh, the capstan is or the pinch roller is locked onto this plastic pin. You see one's up. So that would allow this one to go up. This one's down, which would hold the other one down. I think that's how this works. But that normally sits in that groove like that. Is this going to be a simple fix? I bet it's going to be a real simple fix. I think the capstan or the pinch roller was just was out of position.
I get the feeling that that's supposed to go in like that. I don't know, it just doesn't doesn't look right. When the head turns around and goes the other way. That moves this lever here. This whole part, this mechanism slides back and forth. Controller's up now. I'm just turning this gear back here. I'll turn it the other way. And this controller should go up. Which it is. Okay. That, uh, yeah, I think that's where it goes. It was, uh, so the This pin here goes in here, fits into here, and then this spring is clipped on there. And if you try to just put this thing on, what ends up happening is the uh, control pin is is uh, too low, so it won't it won't operate the uh, mechanism. It won't put tension. If I reverse this, so that this control pin or control lever is up. I can then put the controller on. I think that's what happened to this thing. Somehow that pin jumped out of place. It doesn't like to be in too bad a shape on this unit. It's not even dirty. A little bit of wear on there, but uh, it actually doesn't look too bad. The belt doesn't look to be in too bad a shape either. It's not loose, that's for sure. And uh, it doesn't look to be sloppy, so I think the belt's okay. Let's, uh, I'm just going to put this thing back in the mechanism and we'll, or in the box, the big empty box, and we'll see whether uh, the auto reverse works on it now. The all important ground wire because it's a plastic chassis. The only way this mechanism is getting grounded is by that uh, that wire. Time to recharge the magnetic screwdriver. It seems to be getting a bit weak. That plugs in there, and that one plugs back in there. Amp connected, and then we'll give this thing a check over. We'll do a recording and a playback on it, and see how it uh, how it's sounding. More importantly, is it going to work on both sides? And we'll check the speed out, of course, as well.
check out the speed on this. I can uh, do it with either my 440 or my 3 kilohertz tape. I've got one, it's got both on it here. Plug that into my counter. We'll just adjust the motor speed. So the speed adjustment on this is not in the motor because it's a it's a multi-speed motor. So the speed adjustment is right there. The other side of the tape should be 440. So we look at the other direction. Seems to be a little more wild and flutter in the reverse direction. Which is interesting, it could be a worn pinch roller. Certainly, uh, certainly more wand flutter in the reverse direction, that's for sure. Um, not a heck of a lot we can do about that. That's, I mean, most of these basic cheap. Uh, cassette decks when they measure them they typically only measure them in the forward direction whenever you see specs and they'll measure the wand flutter they measure it in the forward direction and, and the reason for that is because the reverse direction there's less contact between the belt and the flywheel in the forward direction the belt is wrapping all the way around the flywheel so it's got good contact but how it's how it's wrapping around is it's wrapping all the way around the forward direction flywheel and it's only making a very small contact one small surface area on the reverse side so there's not as good of torque also the reverse direction is the side that is leaving the motor first so the motor is spinning counterclockwise to the left and the belt goes around the motor and that's the loose side of the belt which goes around a portion of the flywheel for the reverse direction to spin the flywheel clockwise then the belt goes around basically the majority of the other flywheel that turns it counterclockwise and then the belt heads back to the motor so the side that's under full torque is the side going around the capstan shaft for the forward direction so it doesn't matter what tape deck you look at these auto reverse decks never have the same spec in the reverse direction as you do in the forward and you'll always find that there's going to be more wound flutter in the reverse direction. The uh, auto reverse is more of a convenience feature, it's not a performance feature. That's why high-end decks do not auto reverse. The real high-end decks that would auto reverse the tape did it by actually pulling the tape off the transport, physically turning the tape over and putting the tape back on the transport. I'm referring to the Nakamichi that did that. But um, yeah, auto reverses decks are generally not that high end. Now due to the fact that this tape is kind of chewed up at the beginning, there is going to probably be some dropouts. So we're going to go past that part. Okay, I'm set up for a recording. This tape has got it's chewed up a bit at the beginning, so I'm going to let it run for a bit before starting up the music. But let's put it into... Uh, record pause. And I'll set Dolby be on. There we go. Okay, time to play the tape back. We'll do a recording on this metal tape as well. Let's see how it See how it handles this old metal tape. So that's the regular tape. Let's 
try this metal tape now. There shouldn't be much recorded on this. We're pushing the plus three on this one. Okay, that should be enough. Well, it certainly doesn't perform very well on a metal tape. Now, it might be just the taste that's, but I think it's just the machine itself. You know, they had, they were metal capable, but uh, really, um, plus the fact that this tape is 36 years old, so the tape itself is probably on its last legs. But the uh, recording on the regular tape didn't sound half bad. I'm going to say this one's a success. Button it up and get it out of here. Hey, tops on the unit. Reverse. Forward. That's it. This one's done. If you guys notice the Easter egg in the video, tell me what it is where you saw it. Thanks for watching.